Let's go to the, the, <laughs> Here we go. Let's what's go to the, the topic the... that I want to talk about because it's been 30 years since since this uh this uh, this show took place uh, in Chicago 30 years ago, King. What are you talking about? Super Clash 3. Vern Gagne presents Super Clash 3. From the University of Illinois, Chicago Pavilion in Chicago, Illinois, these matches are sanctioned by the AWA, the WCCW, the CWA, and the CWF. And now let's go to ringside and your host for this evening, Larry Nelson. Super Clash 3 was 30 years ago? 30 years ago today, as we sit here and record on December 13th, 30 years ago, we have Jerry Lawler, AWA World Heavyweight Champion, going against Kerry Von Erich. It was a great match in Chicago between you and Kerry Von Erich. Um, you know, a lot of people talk about this pay-per-view. They criticize it, uh, the whole show. But when it comes to positive reviews, the match between you and Kerry, uh, you know, definitely uh, gets a lot of praise. Also on the on this um, the show, there's a lot of a lot of young youngsters. You have a 23-year-old Mick Foley wrestling yep. uh, wrestling on this card. You have a uh, a young Jeff Jarrett. I think he was 21 years old. Jeff Jarrett wrestling on this card. Uh, Medusa was on this card wrestling. So a lot of youngins. Uh, yeah, this this was you know that whole show was put together uh, by uh, pr- pretty much all the promoters that were that felt you know threatened by the fact that that Vince McMahon and WWE had sort of raided their, and we, I think we talked about this last week, you know, they felt like Vince was raiding their territories and taking all their talent. When in reality, it was the talent that was saying, Hey, I want to go and work for the company that has worldwide TV. I don't want to just be stuck here in a, you know, a local yokel situation where I'm only seen in, in, in you know, on uh, TV shows and in, in a few cities when he's got nationwide TV. So that's what happened. That's why this, that's why the, the main talent left, uh, and poor Vern Gagne. I mean, he lost almost all of his top guys yeah. to Vince. Uh, and so, you know, like I said, we, we, we lasted the longest territory wise was because, you know, I was part owner and I was the guy on top and I didn't want to go anywhere. So, you know, that's why we were able to, we were able to, the, the people in Memphis, and our territory didn't feel like they had ever lost their top star. So, uh, but the other territories, these promoters all got together and they thought that, you know, that putting on this big pay-per-view was the way to, uh, you know, to the way to combat Vince and, and his worldwide domination at the time. And really, when you look at all, do you have the card there in front of you? I do. I mean, there was some there was some decent talent Dude, just just from top to bottom. What what was the card? What were the matches? Well, you have the Guerreros. You got Chavo, Mondo, Hector uh, against Cactus Jack and the Rock and Roll RPMs. Rock and Roll RPMs. Uh, a couple guys territory. I mean, uh, that was a, a tag team from our territory. Yeah, Mike Davis and Tommy Lane. You have uh, Eric Embry and Jeff Jarrett, uh, Handsome Jimmy, Wayne Bloom, King uh, Iceman King Parsons versus uh, Brick uh, Brickhouse Brown. You had the Top Guns, which was Ricky Rice and Derek Dukes with uh, Wendy Richter. And you had Paul Diamond and Pat Tanaka with uh, Medusa. And DDP was also uh, on this show. Uh, Greg Gagne and Ron Garvin. You had the you had uh, Sergeant Slaughter. You had the Samoan, Samoan SWAT team with Samu and Fatu. You had Wahoo McDaniel, Manny Fernandez. And, of course, you had your match, Rock and Roll Express versus the Stud Stable. Uh, that you know, this card is it was a, it was a decent yeah, card. It was a lot of good, a lot of top talent. Where it was um, oh gosh, was Michael were Michael Hayes and uh, Terry? Oh Gordon yeah, Michael it? Hayes. They faced they faced the Samoan SWAT team. Uh, Michael Hayes yeah. and Steve Cox. Yeah, I mean there are a lot of a lot of good names on there. Oh my god, the, what? Oh, what? one of my favorites of all time. Who? Well, he's not an, he's not a wrestler, but he was one of my favorite announcers, Lee Marshall. Oh my gosh, Lee Marshall! Oh, that voice said Lee Marshall. They're yes. great. He was a, he was a frosted t- Tony the Tiger. Yes, frosted exactly. flakes. 
It's Lee Marshall on his way over here. Lee, we've only got a very short amount of time. Again, in the title match, we said it before, we both favor the king. Absolutely. This is a match where two men are going to walk into the ring, both of them with belts. One man is going to walk out with two belts. I'm so delighted that there are so many Kerry Von Erich fans here. I know that there are a lot of fans of Jerry the King Lawler. You and I both went on record, Larry. We happen to both favor the AWA Heavyweight Champion of the World, Jerry the King Lawler. Don't Good luck to both that. guys. <laughs> and he was a WCW back when I was a teenager. So he was, uh, he always did the, the 1-800 number, the 1-900 number. He would always do that for WCW. But he was the he was the play-by-play uh, -play guy for this for the show and did some ringside interviews. But Lee yeah. Marshall is one of my all-time favorite announcers. Yeah, he did a good job on our match as well. I've you know watched it a bunch of times and listened to Lee doing the commentary on it, and it was a you know it was a like I said a lot of a lot of names. They just didn't they just didn't have that national exposure to to plug this thing. Yeah, uh, you know everybody was plugging it on their own little syndicated TV shows. And it was, you know, you didn't have that. You didn't have like what the WWE had or what WCW had at the time. You didn't have that national TV to plug this pay per view. So, you know, it 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 did as did did as good as it could. And I, I like I said, uh, you know, I didn't really get to watch any of the other matches. I just knew there were, you know, there were some good names on the on the show. But uh, then when it got around to our match, I'm glad everybody. I don't. I don't I'm not heard any real negative comments over the years about it. Everybody seemed to like it. I just, uh, is like, without a doubt, I think we said this before, the bloodiest match. I mean, I've been in a lot of bloody matches in my career. Tommy Rich, man, Tommy Rich would would bleed like a, a stuck hog. <laughs> but uh, uh, just a bunch of guys, a lot of bloody matches. But that match with Kerry Von Erich was the bloodiest match I've ever been in. Well, let's talk about that match. Now, there's been a lot of, uh, you know, controversy surrounding this match when Kerry you know, it was busted open his arm was busted open early on if that was supposed to happen and wasn't supposed to happen there's been rumors that he cut himself on accident in the ring before the match right before we took his jacket off or it was when in the locker room and you guys had the plan around that uh what's what's the case what was up with with Kerry's arm you know first few minutes of the match well, that little uh, incident happened in the locker room right before the match started. They called us together, Vern Gagne and uh, me, and um, I think uh, Gary Marshall and, and uh, was it was not was it Gary Marshall? What's his name? The announcer that we talked about, Lee Marshall. Lee Marshall. Gary Marshall was what's his name? Uh, the movie guy, right? <laughs> but anyway, they called us all together, and then. Uh, I can't remember who the guy had or, or who Kerry had that was representing, uh, you know, the WCW, or not WCW, but it was world class who was representing them. But anyway, they called the four of us, or five of us together there, and we're all standing looking at each other. And to be quite honest, I mean, the, the match is like basically um, in the intermission right before the main event. And we're just standing there. <clears throat> And nobody has said anything to us about what was going to happen in the match. And honestly, I, I felt from the get go that, uh, you know, they were going to have Kerry go over in this thing. And, and I really feel like from the get go that Kerry believed that he was going to go over in this match. Right. Yeah. And so, uh, but, but I know this Kerry was like really nervous and he was, <clears throat> he was just kind of, pacing around or just not, not, not necessarily pacing. He's standing there, but he's shifting his weight back and forth from his left foot to the right foot. And, and he's, and he's scratching his arms and everything uh, like he's, like he's itching all over. And so they're telling, you know, what, what they want us to do. And, and uh, so then all of a sudden Kerry just, he had like scratched his right shoulder with his, with his left hand. And then all of a sudden he reaches up to scratch under his arm with his right, with his right hand. And I guess he forgot that he had this blade taped to his, to his index finger. Right. Yeah. And so he goes to scratch under his arm and man, he just ripped his arm open and his, you know, his muscles, I mean, to carry had huge biceps. And when that skin ripped open on the bottom of his arm, Ooh. it just like, it just like pulled apart. Like it was a, just like it popped 
And I mean, blood started shooting out of there like crazy. And everybody's going, oh, my God, what, oh, oh, look out, what did you do? And he's like, oh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And so uh, they tried to put some tape and they could, you know, tried to wipe it off and tried to put some tape on it. And he was wearing, Carrie was wearing a big uh, robe. And so they said, all right, just, you know, ring the bell, ring the bell quick, right? So we went out to the ring and his arm was bleeding under his robe already. And soon as they made the introductions, if you watch it back, I rushed across the ring even before he could get his, uh, his robe off and attacked that arm. And I grabbed it by the wrist and I started banging his arm on the turnbuckle, on the top turnbuckle. Right. And uh, and so that was, of course, then when we get when we got his robe off, his arm was already bleeding. And, uh, of course, Lee Marshall said, oh, my gosh, look at this. The king is, you know, the king has opened up Terry's arm. Look at uh, uh, or Carrie's arm. Look at this. I mean, just, Carrie's arm is bleeding like crazy from that top turnbuckle. And then, of course, in reality, he had he had kind of mistakenly sliced it right before the match, right before we went out for the match. Jeez. Well, so, so he so, was so he was bleeding like crazy from his arm, and but that was nothing compared to what he did to his head a little bit later on. Oh my God! Well, my question for you, you know, obviously, you know, Carrie had some problems um, with addiction and whatnot. I mean, was there any worries on your end? I mean, working with someone that possibly could be drugged up or taking drugs in the ring, you know, putting your life in danger. Was there any any kind of worries on your part? No. You know what? And and I, I look back on it and I do rem I do remember this part certain things I remember distinctly. I do remember running over and grabbing his arm, but you know, it was pounded it on that top turn. But then I remember later on in the match when Kerry had me down on my back and he has the claw on me, right? But he's bleeding so profusely that he couldn't see anything. It blows covering both his eyes and the referee's trying to check on him and see if he can continue. But he's, but he has me in the finishing hole. He has me in the claw. Right. And he's right above me. And the blood was just dripping off of his head and off of his chin going right down into my mouth. Oh. And, and, but I swear to you, this was like one of the, I, I, re I remember that distinctly, but it was like, I don't know what you, what year was this 30 years ago? Yeah. 88. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. I don't even know if uh, if AIDS or whatever had even been invented yet then, or if it was even talked about, you know. So not, that that nothing like that ever even crossed my mind. Uh, I was just you know caught up in the match and all that sort of thing. I didn't even I didn't even think about any any health hazards or anything like that with Carrie. You know. Well, I'm watching the match right now as you talk, and like when Carrie gets in the ring, he immediately opens up his robe and looks you know down the sleeve of his robe to, to check on his <laughs> he was arm. embarrassed i promise you poor carrie was so embarrassed that that happened so he's taking off uh, his belt he's you know he has uh he's in the <laughs> ring you're looking over and you take off your belt and then he's his robe is still on he's checking his arm still he, he does he's still checking his arm <laughs> still checking his arm the referee's holding the belts up you are in your corner ready to go you know they they do a crowd shot. He still has his robe on. He still he right. still has his robe on. He's just pacing in the ring. You're looking down. I think a ring. Now he, now he takes his robe off, and there's no blood. There's not not a lot of you don't I don't see any blood going down his arm or anything. His robe is completely off. You do some, and then here you attack him. There you go. So there you go. Man, he's jacked. Yeah. <laughs> But here he goes. So here's you know this this match. Like you said, there was a bloody match, and you said later on. Wait a minute, you're not gonna, you're not going to do a Lee Marshall on his arm. You're not no, gonna no, 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 no. Okay, good, no. good, good. No, no. I, well, we can fast forward. To but the I mean, you know, that was that was a match in in which, um, you know, Vern especially didn't want his champion, who was me, to lose, and you know the WCW guys didn't want their champion, who was Kerry, to lose. And so, you know, they came up with something that uh, I won, but he didn't lose. I mean, you know, he looked like he had the match won and he had me in his finishing hold. But then the referee took the heat basically by stopping the match and declaring me the winner, saying that Kerry couldn't continue because he's, you know, he's cut open too bad. Right. And so it, it was a, it was a, to me, a, a, good way to, you know, a good way to change the titles without hurting anyone. Uh, you know, all the WCW, w, I keep saying WCW, I stand corrected again, but all the world-class fans, you know, in watching the match, they could easily go around and say, oh, you know, K 
Kerry got screwed. He really won that match, you know, and, and should have won that match and that sort of thing. So, um, and, yeah, it was it was good. And both of you didn't know the you know who was going to win until right before the match even started, right? Le- probably less than five minutes before. Wow. Well, and a lot of people are you know talking about the finish if that was because of too much blood if that was planned to be that way, but that that the ending went all to to plan, correct? Yeah, it did. Yep. Well, you were playing. You're kind of playing the heel during this match, but you went on the mic after the match and said, "Oh, the ref made the right decision to stop it." You know, um, you know, kind of playing. That's not very a heelish thing to do, though. Well, um, I don't know if I was. I don't know if I was actually. You know, for the people back in Memphis, uh, I, I wasn't a heel. You know, I was I was just a, I was just a heel when I went outside of Memphis. So I was kind of try, I was trying to play the more sort of the Daniel Bryan type heel, you know, not just not just uh, blatantly uh, outright healing, uh, but just kind of being a logical type heel that would that would, you know, for the world class fans, I was a heel. But for the Memphis fans, uh, I wasn't being, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um... But you know, Kerry was great. You you and Kerry had some matches, you know, especially later on for the title, which I think you went you went over uh, again. But um, this is kind of with the AWA, um, you know, trying to compete with WWF. This is kind of like a, a moment in time to where WWF was starting to take over, and this is kind of a, kind of one of the last shows that we had promotions going at each other. You know, in the it ring. Was al- it was almost like, re- remember the Alamo. Yeah. It was, it was, I felt like, yeah. I felt like we were the Alamo with that one last stand that, uh, uh, and then afterwards, you know, we, we took that final bow. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's just, you know, that's just what happened. And, and hey, who's to say if, uh, uh, yeah, I, I always look at almost everything in life that, that, all of the different things that happened to you have gotten you where you are today, you know, good or bad. And, and, you know, I, I, I mean, just, uh, you can look back on some things that you say, Oh, this was terrible. This was bad. But if that hadn't happened, you probably would be not be where you are today. You wouldn't be the person you are today, you know? So, yeah. Uh, before, before this uh, event, you were given an award. Do you remember that? I was, do you remember that award? No. You were the inspirational wrestler of the year. Oh, from Bill Apter? Bill Apter gave you the <laughs> award uh, before the show. They actually showed it during the uh, the Super Clash 3 uh, broadcast. Uh, young Bill Apter, 30 years ago for Bill Apter, and he gave you the award, and you were like, well, next year you're going to give me wrestler of the year award. Yeah. Uh, you were the is- inspirational res- uh, wrestler of the year. Wow. Yeah, where's that plaque at, King? 30 years ago. That's so amazing. Yeah. 30 years ago. This, uh, I probably, you know, I think I, pr- I probably do have that plaque somewhere. Yeah. It may be down at the club on Beale street. 